For warm saints, all praise to the heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone, who taught the whole world this truth once again, and taught the whole world the Lord's, the heavenly Father's name once again. And you know, me and the brother were just kicking back, chopping it up, and you know, boys get to talking, and you know, we started going through the scriptures. And what we, what we came to the conclusion of, what had got the first chapter, man, consider your ways. So we're going to go ahead and read this in the book of John, the 11th chapter. Hey, let's, let's go ahead and hop up into it. God. So this is the book of St. John, chapter 11, and verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Yahweh Shai did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Yahweh Shai had done. Right, so whenever certain people saw the power of God, Yahweh, and the divinity and spirit that was upon that, you know, certain people believe and those were, and those were uh, was known as the elixirs and other people did what they went to, to try to find some sort of fault within that that's right and, uh, so it says in verse 47 then gathered gathered the chief priests and the pharisees a council and said what do we for this man doeth make mir many miracles if we let that thus alone all men will believe on him and the romans shall come and take away both our place and nation Right, so Yahweh was doing so much, so many good things in true head of fashion. These over righteous people, these holy or Jadal motherfuckers, they, they said, Well, look, he's doing too many good things sincerely. We need to go ahead and get him out the way. That's right. He's too powerful in the spirit of God. We need to get him out the way. Because if we don't do that, the Romans going to come down on all of us, and then our money going to be gone. And then us, we be the high priest right now. But if this guy comes, we're going to just be regular motherfuckers. Yep. Shit, no. Yep. Go ahead, say God, so it says in verse 49, and one of them named Typhus, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Nor yeah, you know nothing, John Snow. God, God. Yeah. So it says, Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. Right, now why is that such a big deal? God. Because all the other kings of Israel, starting with that nut ass nigga Saul, they wanted the people to suffer for them. They wanted the people to suffer for their ambition, for their own lust. But hey, Isaiah 53, it pleased the Lord to bruise Yahweh Shai. This was a king, this was a son of David. But this psychopathic family of Jacob, this was a son of David who said, you know what? I would rather suffer for the people. Even if I'm innocent. You know? Uh, and and uh, another point I wanted to add on is that he. It, it's it, um, also important because Jake didn't realize that what they were doing, even though it was an evil thing, and they they are going to be punished for it, you know, at the at the end of it, it is a good thing because Yahweh Shai gave repentance unto sins, yes, for the elect, but also for all of Israel. That's why all of Israel is going to be in the kingdom, you know, because they made that decision to sacrifice Yahweh Shai. That's why this next part was written in verse fifty one, and it says. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahweh Shai should die for that nation. Right, he was speaking through the spirit. Yep. But why did, well, what does it mean that Yahweh Shai should die for the whole nation? Read 53. So it says in verse, uh, verse 52, it says, and not for that nation only, but that he also should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. Right, so he had to die so that all the children who were scattered abroad would be brought together. Yep. And that ties you back to, back to what and who? The friend of God, Father Abraham, who had many sons. That's right. Going back to Genesis 22, I want to say verse 8 and on down. It speaks about how, uh, and then from there, can you hit Joel 34, 18? In Genesis 22, it speaks about how... Uh, Isaac asked Abraham upon the mountain, well, Father, here is the fire, here is the sticks, but where is the uh, the lamb for a burnt offering? And what did Abraham tell unto his son Isaac? The Lord himself will provide a lamb. And then in the physical, the Lord sent a ram to them and they sacrificed the ram. But then whenever Yahweh Shai was delivered up by the will of God to be a sacrifice, that was that lamb. And now we have his blood on our doorpost. Job 34. Verse 18. And why is it such a big deal that you have that? Uh, why, once again, Isaiah 53. Why did it please the Lord to rule this king of Israel who wanted to suffer for the people? 
just like with Abraham, well, if, if he's the one you chose, why is he suffering so much? Why can't he go into the Holy Land yet? Yeah, he's the chosen one. If he's the king of Israel, he's so innocent, why does he have to die? Okay, I... This is the book of uh, Job, chapter 34, and verse 18, and it reads, is it, fit, is it fit to say to a king, thou art wicked, and to princes, ye are ungodly? Right. Does it, is it fit to say to a king, you are wicked? No, it's not, but sometimes it's just the fucking truth. Uh, I don't got my source like Could you get uh, Proverbs 16 and 12? Because whenever you read the book of Kings, it tells you about a whole bunch of wicked men who always put the Heavenly Father's will to the side for their own ambition and for their own lust. 16 and 12? Um, but, uh, but there was always a certain select few remnant, mainly, uh, mainly of the... Of, uh, Whenever you read that about the kings of Judah, mainly the seed of David in Judah was God known. Yeah. And, uh, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, and verse 12, and it reads, It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Right, it's an abomination for a king to commit wickedness. Yeah. That's why whenever you read the book of Kings, there were so many times where the people began, when the kings began to neglect the widows, the orphans, and the homeless, because they were like these broke ass niggas, nobody, who, who gives a fuck? And the, the Lord would always send his prophets and say, hey, those people are a little bit more important than you think. In fact, if you don't take care of them, the whole structure of society around you will crumble. But they didn't take heed. Why? Because unlike Yahawashai, these men, they wanted to do, uh, once again, they put off the Lord for their own thing. So, real quick, I wanted to get a precept just to back up that brother's point, man. It's going to be the book. It's going to be the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, and verse 31. And it reads, the prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And it's the same thing, you know, today with, with the, these other camps like IUIC, IUCPK. You know, they do these things they're, uh, in the idea of gaining for themselves, you know. So I'll read that again. It says, and the priests bear rule by their means. So they'll do anything that they that they find convenient for them. You know, as versus Yahweh Shai, you know, he did things that were convenient for the sheep of the lost, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. You know, but, you know, so this, so I say that to say this is you also have to find, you know, that witticism within within this truth, man, because even though Jake is doing all this evil, it's written about. Man, I, that, that's one thing that just hit me, you know, whenever you said that right now. But one thing that the record of the Israelites, the Bible tells you, yeah. one thing, one thing that you see whenever you summarize all the stories is that it's telling you the best of men don't live for themselves. Yep. The most how the, the greatest of men do not live for themselves. In fact, they sacrifice, they delay gratification to the highest. Yep. So it says, and my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? You know, because like we said at the end of the day, you know, Jake is going to be punished for all because they don't consider the fact that what they're doing is evil. You know, but what they're doing is 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 written so that at the end of the day we all rejoice and uh, and we are we're all in the kingdom. All right, read, read that last part again, please. God. So it says, and what will ye do in the end thereof? So I can read a little bit before that. All right, so this is Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 31. I'm going to read the whole thing. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. Our people love hearing bullshit. Our people love having their delusions inflated because that allows them to keep on being little selfish, hedonistic narcissists, psychopathic narcissists. Sexual pervert, perverts, you just like to be a gangster and shoot people. You love to crash out and go to jail. You're retarded. But they love to hear these different things. Oh, no, black culture's not bad. Everybody just hating. Nigga, you're retarded. Now from here, let's get to Jeremiah 44, verse 9. You know, hey, this is this is one more thing to understand, man. It don't take you to, uh, to walk around with a scowl on your face to understand the Heavenly Father's truth. Don't take you to walk around like like uh, I know certain Jake make it seem like you can never you know smile at all. But King Solomon said in the Book of Ecclesiastes, "What better thing is there for you to do than smile?" 
you know, what better thing? I think it's Ecclesiastes 8, 17, to be married. Hey, hey, if it's not for you to suffer right now, then don't suffer, you know? Whenever the disciples were with Yahweh Shai, they weren't just sitting down, so mad about the kingdom. I, Yahweh Shai like, man, me too, man, this shit blows. Like, nah, that, nah they, they was rejoicing, man. Baking bread, edifying each other, company one another, rejoicing in the remembrance of God and rejoicing that, hey, it is coming. Yep. And let's turn over, hey, yeah, hey, the heavenly father coming back, you yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. Hey, and it's written that they, whenever the day comes closer and closer, the people out here, they're going to mourn because they don't have the, the guide and the light of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh But we do, and that's something to rejoice in, to know the next step to take because you're being guided to, to even though you fall, you understand how to get back up. And that's something to rejoice in, you know? Yes, sir. And so this is the book of Jeremiah chapter 44, and you said verse 9. So verse 9 says, How have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives and your own wickedness? Right, and, and this is a message to all of our people, man. Yep. Now, this, this doesn't apply to you, man. Hey, blessings, but all you different uh, people out there, man, hey, specifically IEYC, all, you, all these different uh, false camps with these different doctrines, yep. you got to consider this, man. Are you just being a selfish narcissist? Look at these different leaders. Jim, uh, this dude Nathaniel was on a horse. You had woman crying, oh, oh, he's like a king of Israel. You gotta ask yourself, and then he didn't correct it. You know, you, you gotta ask yourself, now is it wrong for you to be on a horse? Oh, you can ride a horse if you want to, man. If somebody cries about it, that's their fucking fault. But you know, if I wasn't on, on a horse and someone called me this great king, I would tell them, hey, I'm your fellow servant. You know, well, who the fuck are you, you know? I'm from the east side. I'm talking about like, have you forgotten the wickedness of the kings, their pride, their their different, uh, how their ambition and lust took over their reasonable minds? And so it, it says, and the wickedness of your wives and they which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, they are not humbled even unto this day. Neither have they feared nor walked in my law nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. Yeah, here it is. The other Taha has told, uh, you know, that dude, the uh, bishop, but then you, many times about himself. They go back a long time, you know, so I take his word for it. I believe he's a truthful man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and Bishop Nathaniel don't give a fuck. He, he's changing breakdowns more and more. Yeah. I think he's blatantly lying to people. I remember when I first came in in 2016, I came in through the IUIC. I go on a website, Boys are selling $75 breakdowns. Where they do that at? You know what I'm saying? When you have a shot, I'm like, hey, I'll tell you a secret, my nigga, but you go ahead and slide me 20 like that. <laughs> that shit, shit never fucking happen. Like, and that makes it laughable. You know, that, yeah. that that makes it funny because these things that this was written about, man. You know, you have to you have to find the witticism in your heart. How this this story is a at the end of the day, it was called it was called the good news. You know, the gospel. The gospel. Yeah. That's, it's called good news yeah. unto our people. There's gonna be niggas who don't get it. That, it's not meant for them, man. You don't gotta cry and 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 how it's written. We we know they're coming back in the kingdom. Yeah, you gotta go through it right now. And of course, whenever you are going through it, you may not you may not be smiling in that moment. But when you recall these words and you recall how the heavenly Father is gonna bless us at the end of the day, that definitely should bring you a smile. Bro. Yeah, I'm going through hell, but all the law Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, I can still call upon his name. I can still put up a lesson. I can still read and understand. Hey, you got to find things to be thankful for in the heavenly father, man. Bro, if we you, Israelites. We blessed in here. Yep, that's right, man. You, you, if you're always crying and pouting and, 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 and being sorrowful, man, you got you to gotta pray that the heavenly father uplifts your spirit, man. You know? Because you had you did like Jeremiah was a weeping prophet and stuff. You know, so it's nothing wrong with crying, but at the end of the day, we, we're not Jeremiah. We're not during the times of, of Jeremiah. We're in the times of, of Yahweh Shai returning. You know, we're in the times of, of the kingdom right around the corner. Right, Jeremiah witnessed his, his brothers getting skinned alive, their heads getting put on spice, women eating their fucking kids, you know. You're okay, I can. You're crying about that girl, leave you on red, shut up. Man. Like, I'm so yeah. sick of Jay calling me about female. Bro, you're okay. You Our forefathers, Read about Moses. Our forefathers went up to King's castles and knocked them bitches down. You're crying about a slut. Don't tell me about that. Uh, you're more powerful than that. You know. So let's go ahead and get Proverbs uh, chapter one and verse twenty-four. The, the thing, the thing to remember through all these different things is that life is really a comedy. As a writer, 
one thing that about comedy, there's always a happy ending. So we're in these dire situations that can literally be unto death. Some of us gonna be martyrs in these times. Yeah. You know, but there's a happy ending. Yeah. That's the reason for you to smile. Hey, you hey. Said my servant shall not taste the death. You know, you're not gonna taste that. You may you may that you may temporarily go to sleep and your spirit go back with the heavenly father. But it's written that they're gonna come back. You know, we're gonna come back, we're gonna get be given that power. And if you truly believe yourself to be part of the elect, then you'll be in that rejoicing spirit of your how about you shot. Makes the reason the veins. So this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 24. It says, Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have said it not all my counsel, and one and none, and with wood none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear coming. Yeah, especially because the prophets have been telling you people yeah, exactly. all these things gonna happen. So whenever we actually see y'all take the chip and then y'all start getting sick about it, we gonna laugh in your fucking face. Uh -huh. Basically, you really, we've been telling you about this shit. Yep. Since back in like the 2000s, nigga, you really took it and now you're mad. And look, I can guarantee you when they get it, they gonna be on Facebook, pray, pray for us. Pray, nigga, no. I got balls in my hand. My yeah, forehead, like my bones are aching more and more every day. You know, I keep feeling a sting, you know, and get, get sick. Man, we go, it's gonna be funny. Like, damn, like y'all niggas, we told you not to take, we told you all the things this thing could, could contain. We told you all these things. We're gonna laugh at you, man. Bro, same thing with this fucking vaccine shit. We told you don't do that. Now niggas getting heart attacks. Uh, oh, how could this happen? <laughs> hey, 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 and, and, and so what? And, you know, Jake may may find that hardness, you know, but people die every day, B. It's, you know? it's the earth, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Come hey, on, man. There's a death is nothing new. Ever since ever since Adam fell to, out from the garden, we've been dying, bro. You know, we've been dying. What we're praying for is that this is the last kingdom where these things have to happen. Man. Right. You know? So you got anything else, brother? It's Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. All right, that's the You want me to read it? Kind of. Sword was right now. But I got it up here though. Chapter 1 verse 5 says. Yeah, and the reason why we're bringing out the book of Haggai is because we just read about Yahweh Shai, how he voluntarily went up, went, up, went up on the cross. He voluntarily walked into his suffering with a good, faithful mind towards the Lord, remembering the promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Meanwhile, with the wicked kings of Israel, they forgot about, they, they put the promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the will of the Lord, Yahweh, behind them for their own ambitions and their own lust. That's a characteristic that we should not fall into. We should fall into the path of Yahweh Shai and be uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Because the Apostle Paul says, be ye followers of me as I am a follower of Yahweh Shai, because he set an excellent example. This is the book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 5. Now therefore, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, consider your ways. Right, yeah, yeah, consider your ways. Okay. Says, ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, consider your ways. Right, everybody's so righteous, but yet it, it don't look like you're not, you don't, you're not giving any reward. Why? Because you need to consider your ways. Yeah. Be in a state of constantly considering your ways. You need to constantly check yourself before you check somebody else. Yeah. Real shit, real, 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 real deal, holy field. Yeah, that's right. You know, like I was trying to say, how can you, how can you, uh, cast a, take a brother, take a beam out of your brother's eye if you still have a beam in your own eye. Yeah, big ass fucking plank in your shit. That's right. Smacking everybody. But you know, that being said, Lord willing, it was edifying unto the saints. All praise to our Heavenly Father. Yeah, how up? Uh, show me how we shine. And double honors to the elders, the apostles, great millstone, on top of the whole world, the Lord's name in this doctrine once again. Shalom. Shalom.